Welcome back to our pure data tutorial. So today we are going to work on more with the use of the pix image and some of the digital image processing effect. So this is one of the example we have come across in last week. So we have used the gem library to display a piece of image by the use of the pix image command and route it through to the pix texture to wrap or map it around the rectangle. So for today, I use a rectangle of 4x4, which is a square. And we can have a look of the actual presentation of this graphics. So this is the result without any digital image processing command. So what we are going to do is we make use of the number of filter-like effects. So the filter effect, you can also find it from other digital image processing software similar to Photoshop or Jim. So in this exercise, we are going to have a look of free commands or free objects. And as they are all dealing with the pixel element, the raster image, so they all start with the PIX prefix, similar to the pix image or pix film or pix video we come across in the last exercise. The first one we are going to play around with is the pix dot. The second one is the pix meta image. The last one is the pix luma offset. So most of them you may have a chance to encounter of the effect in, for example, like music video or graphic designs. So we'll make use of them to have a look of those graphical effects you can achieve by using pure data and the gem library. In order to make use each one of those graphical processing effects, you need to insert those commands between the image and also the texture such that the image is trying to open, in this case is the Mona Lisa pictures, will passing through the command, for example, pix dot, before it arises the pix texture command to be rendered on top of this particular rectangle. Each of those graphical processing effects, they come with a number of parameters. So usually there's a number where you can control the size of the effect, of the scale of the effect. For example, the pix dot is actually, it will use a dot, a color dot to represent the luminance of the color of the image where you import by using the open command. And the size of the dot is actually you can control by some number. And we're going to use a slider instead of a number box over here so that you can have a more usable interface. So I'm going to use a horizontal slider. And in the slider, I'll change the properties. So I'll make use of the range. The left hand side is zero and the right hand side will be one. So we do not need to use the larger range from zero to 127, but by just limited to the shorter range from zero to one. And I connect it to the pix dot effect box.
So let's have a look at the result. When you push the slider, drag from left to right, you can see the change in the effect. So this is the area where you have the dot which close to the value 1. And those are the area just between 0 and 1. So you can see that whenever the dot is a little bit smaller, you have a higher resolution of the image. And if you have a bigger dot, you have lower resolution. So alternatively, you can also try to make use of the size of the dot, for example, to increase it within the range of 0 and 2. And then you can have a look of the effect if you have even bigger dot compared with the last exercise. So this is the effect of using a bigger dot which is bigger than 1 and close to 2. So this is the first effect we come across by using the pix dot command which control the size of a color dot to represent the original image. In the next demonstration, we are going to use the pix matter image instead of the pix dot. So again, we connect it from the pix image and the pix texture. And before connecting the right inlet, we have a look of the parameter. So they also come with the size parameter in the right hand side of the inlet. So we try out this one by using the same horizontal slider box. And again we change the property to the right limit as 1. And we save it to have a look of the effect. And then we can play around with the slider again. If we have a lower value in the slider, you have a more accurate or higher resolution representation of the original image. And if you push it to the right hand side, you have a lower resolution of the image, but the each individual composition will be clear or bigger for you to have a look. And when you close to one, so actually become the original image without the composition of the pixel. So the explanation of the effect is you try to find out or divide the screen into smaller square and for each of the smaller square you take the luminance or the brightness of the picture and then to change the original image according to the brightness and also the color to represent the whole image. So this is also one of the common effects you can find in TV or in other material like the motion graphics. So after the demonstration of the second one with the matter image, we continue to play around with 
the third one. Before working on the parameter, if you take a look of the help, it comes with four options. One is the number called the offset. The second one is the number called the gap. And the third and the fourth is another two toggle boxes which use to control the feel and the smooth. We'll start with the first two number and then take care of the last two one later. Similar to the last cases, we will make use of a horizontal slider in order to represent or control the number. The first slider was used to control the amount of offset and the second one will control the gap between the color bar. And the range of the horizontal slider we may need to adjust. Unlike the first two, which used to have the value between 0 and 1. So in this time, we will use a little bit larger number like 20, which is roughly in the unit of pixels. And for the second one, we also use the number 20, and you can compare and take a look of the relationship between the number values and the result effect. If you adjust the first value, so this is the offset you can have a look of the change in that particular horizontal line. If we have a value close to zero, it's more or less a horizontal line with different colors. And the color is the original representation of the image at that particular pixel point. And if you move the slider towards the right hand side, you can have a look of the more prominent change in the color according to the luminance, that's the brightness. And for the second slider, if you change the value from a smaller one to a bigger one, you can easily identify the relationship. If you have a smaller number you can have a look the gap between the color line is much smaller and if you push it towards the right hand side you can easily notice a bigger gap between those lines so this is the parameter we call the gap you can also notice this is a very common graphical effect you can find in, for example, CD this cover design or other graphical element. And as I mentioned, there are two more parameters which used to control the appearance of the Luma effect. We can have a look at them. The first one is fill with a parameter as noted, notated by the dollar sign one. So that means we are going to pass one more parameter on top of this one before we send it to the Luma offset effect. And the second one is smooth. The one we are going to pass through them 
will be a toggle box, which is essentially a number, either 0 or 1. In our original version, we don't have the field and the smooth. So that means the graphics will produce only horizontal lines, which represent the original image. So if we make use of the field box over here, it will create a field color between those horizontal lines and fill up the gap. So with and without the field. So with the field, you can also change the smooth. You can have a look at the difference between with smooth and without smooth. Without smooth, you can clearly see the division between each of the, the lines. And with smooth, you will notice the blending between those color band. So those are the four parameters you can make use to enhance the visual representation of this particular effect called the Luma Offset. So in summary, we conclude that we work on with a number of those digital graphical processing effects. The first one, the pix dot, which used the color dot to represent the original image. And the meta image, which used exactly the original image and keep it to a smaller scale and use it to have a collage of the larger one. And for the Luma offset, we'll divide the image into horizontal color bands and then use it to represent the original image. So those are one of the some of the few effects you can find in the gem library. So there are other graphical effects you can have a look each one of them start with the pix command and they have more or less similar correspondence in other digital graphic software like the Photoshop.